Even though these times may seem crazy, we may not understand what all is going on, and it may seem chaotic, it's when we need to, we need to worship God even more, so that we can see those victories, even though there's darkness all around us, we still raise a hallelujah, we still worship God for who He is, because even though it's dark times around us, He is not darkness, He is light. So right now, as we worship, I just ask that you just sing even louder, and that we push back the darkness with our praise. So this morning, I ask that you would sing this song with us.
sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little
We're going to get in the Word. How many of you are ready for the Word today? Amen. Let's look in the Word of God to Luke uh, chapter 19. We're going to, that's going to be our, our key verse today uh, in, in Luke 19. But again, let's, let's just ask the Spirit of God to speak to us right now. Father, God, we give ourselves to you for the next few moments. We give you our attention. God, we give the Word of God our full attention attention today. God, that you would just speak to us. Give us ears to hear. Give us a mind to understand and a heart that is receptive. Father, we bind the enemy that would come to steal the word of God. God, we pray today that you would speak to us in a mighty way and let our lives conform to the word of God. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me ask you a question this morning. Anybody here ever been burglarized? Just wave at me. Somebody broke in to your home, broke into your garage or your, or your shed, and they've taken things. I think uh, a lot of us have. Uh, or maybe somebody, you know, you were just, maybe you laid your cell phone down or you laid something down and somebody took it or they took your wallet. Or maybe you were at the gym working out and, and somebody decided they're going to take your wallet, they're going to take your watch, they're going to take something that belonged to you, uh, claimed it as theirs. I mean, man, you feel violated. I mean, you just feel, you know, I worked hard for that item. I worked hard for those things, and somebody just came in and, and took them. And, and, and there's a whole host of different emotions that will arise. I mean, for some, you may feel angry. 
Uh, you may feel abused. You may feel violated. You may feel just a, a, a whole host of different emotions when that happens. Somebody stole something that belonged to you. They stole something that was rightfully yours. And what I want you to understand this morning is there are things on the lookout trying to steal something from you today. They're trying to steal your praise. They're trying to steal your worship. You know, the Bible says that our enemy, Satan, comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The first thing he wants to do is steal our praise. He wants to steal our ability to worship in the good times and the bad times. But then after he steals our praise, there's a, a progression that takes place. After he steals our praise, then he wants to kill our commitment and our love and our passion for Jesus Christ. He wants to, he wants to take away that love. He wants to take away that faithfulness, that commitment, that desire to serve God with all of our hearts. And then the last thing he wants to do is he wants to kill us. And let me tell you, once you've lost your worship and once you've lost your commitment to Christ, then he doesn't have to do much. He just steps back, and then we just follow the path to destruction. And uh, he's here today in this church. He's here. He's everywhere. Uh, or he's not everywhere, but he's got demonic forces that are trying to get us off focus. He's trying to get us distracted. You know, whenever you're attentive to your home or you're attentive to your garage or attentive to the things that you own, it's hard for people to steal if, as long as you're attentive to that, uh, as long as you're aware of what's going on. But if we get distracted, if the enemy knows he can get us distracted, he can get our mind off of the Lord and onto other things, then it's easy for him to steal. And so there are things that are looking for an opportunity to take away the very thing that you and I were created to do. And that is to praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. I said you and I were created for one purpose, and that is to praise the Lord. Did you realize you were actually created to praise God? Scripture says in Isaiah 43 and verse 21, The people I formed for myself, God says, that they may proclaim my praise. Psalm 113 and verse number 1 says this, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you his servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Uh, so we are created to praise the Lord. Psalm 148 and 5 says, Let everything give praise to the name of the Lord. For he issued his command, and they came into being. Psalm 150 and verse number 6 says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we are created, first and foremost, no matter what else you do in life, no matter what your career path, no matter what your goals, no matter what your uh, abilities, your talents, whatever you have, there is one thing that we've all been created for. God didn't just put us here just to put us here. He put us here for a purpose. And our purpose is that we would praise God. And listen, we can't let anything steal our praise. Come on, y'all. I said we can't let anything steal our praise. Now, Jesus references this. He talks about it in Luke chapter 19, verse number 37. And this is our key verse for today's message. It says this, when he came near to the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, rebuke your disciples. In other words, stop them from praising you. And here's what Jesus says in verse 40. I tell you, Jesus replied, if they keep quiet, 
the stones will cry out. I like what the, how the message version reads. It says, he said, if they keep quiet, the stones would do it for them, shouting praise. Jesus says, if my disciples keep quiet, I will have the stones to cry out and praise me. I don't know about you, but I don't want a rock to take my place. I, I, I don't want a stone to take my place. Uh, I, I was created to worship him. You were created. We were all created to worship the Lord. And God says, Jesus says, if they won't worship me, I'll get something else to step in and worship me. If they don't worship me, I'll find somebody. I'll find something. I'll have all creation. I'll have everything that I've made that will cry out and will worship me. And Calvary Assembly of God, hear me today. We can't let anything step in and replace us from praising our great God. Amen. There, we got to praise Him. We got to worship Him. There's some things that are wanting to step in and steal your praise. I, again, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to let a rock praise God in my place. I'm not going to let a stone steal my praise. I want to talk to you for a few moments from the life of David. And in the life of David, I want us to look at five praise stealers. Five things that will rob you of your praise. Five things that will rob you and steal from you the very thing that you were created to do. Now let me give you just a little backdrop of the story. We're going to look at this in 2 Samuel chapter number 6. The Bible talks about this, that the Philistines, which were the enemies of Israel, they came against Israel and they fought a battle and they stole the Ark of the Covenant from the nation of Israel. The Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God. The, the Ark of the Covenant represented the favor and the blessing of God on Israel. And so the Philistines captured the ark of God. And then years later, David and his army went and attacked the Philistines, and they took back the ark of the covenant. And as they were coming back into Jerusalem with the ark of the covenant, this was a historic moment for the nation of Israel. The ark had been restored. And as they were bringing the ark back to Jerusalem, they just began to praise God. They began to celebrate because the ark, which represented the presence of God, the blessings of God, the ark was coming back into Jerusalem and back into Israel. And so David got so excited that he just began to praise God, the Bible says, with all his might. David did not allow the praise stealers to steal his praise. David did not allow his praise to be robbed in that moment. And, and, and from David, I want to point out five praise stealers in this portion of Scripture. And the first praise stealer is position. Everybody say position. I want you to notice in 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 14, it says, Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. And the reason this is so important is because David is the king of Israel. And kings wore their royal robes, their kingly attire. But David laid aside his royal robe and he put on a priestly robe. And he began to praise God with all his might. The Bible says in the New Testament, we are made both priests and kings unto God. So we are priests. Me and you are the priest of your home. You are to lead the way in worship. In your home. Men, you are the priest of the home, and the priest is to lead the rest of the house into worship. But David laid down his position as king, and he took up the, 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 royal, the, the, the robe of the priest. David did not allow his position to rob him of praising God. He laid down his position, and he picked up praise unto God. I think it's easy for us if we're not careful to allow our positions in life to rob us of praising God. Come on, somebody. 
I, I want to remind you, no matter what position that you hold in life, you are created to praise the name of the Lord. Praising God is the most important position that you could ever, ever have. Don't let the position of being a dad or the position of being a mom or the position of being a grandparent or the position of being a spouse or the position of your career, whether that be a waitress or a waiter or a city employee or a teacher or a CEO or a doctor or a lawyer or a janitor or a business owner or a cashier or an administrative assistant. Don't let your position steal your praise. Doesn't matter how high God elevates you or what position you may be in. Don't allow the enemy to take away your praise because of your position. Calvary, listen to me, every single day, lay aside your position and pick up your praise. Lay it down your position and pick up your praise to God. You will never elevate to a position that will cause you not to be qualified to praise the Lord. You will never graduate out of praising God. It doesn't matter from the poor house to the white house. My prayer is that every person in between will learn that Jesus Christ is King of all kings. He is Lord of all lords. He is the highest of the highest, and He deserves our praise. Don't allow your position to rob you of your praise. Lay it aside. Lay it aside. Lay your position aside. Because we're created to praise the Lord. Now here's the second praise stealer I want you to see. Second praise stealer, and that's pride. It's pride. P-R-I-D-E, pride. It's the worst sin we can have. That's what got Satan thrown out of heaven. Pride. All sin is rooted in pride. Now notice 2 Samuel 6, verse 16. It says, As the ark of the Lord was entering the <clears throat> city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. And so David, here he is. He's the king. And he's leaping. <laughs> and he's jumping and he's, he's, he's dancing before the Lord. And history lets us know that kind of dancing was normally done by women. You would never find the king of a nation dancing on the city street. You would just never see that. Kings, <clears throat> excuse me, kings were too dignified. Kings were too kingly. <laughs> They, were, they, were, they had too much dignity. Uh, they had too much statue to dance in the streets. I mean, the king, he was to be a man that had dignity and he would uh, observe all the different protocols and there were just things that a king didn't do, especially in public, but not David. David got on the streets in front of all the people. And he danced, and he leapt, and he jumped, and he did it before the Lord with all his might. With all his might. Listen, this wasn't just a little casual, just a little lifting of the hand. This wasn't just a little quiet meditation. This was a, man, this, this, was, this was all out, all in. For God, David did not allow pray, uh, pride to stop him from praise. So many people let pride steal their praise. And Calvary Assembly of God, don't let, hear me, don't let pride steal you. Steal your praise, amen? Now, 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 now here's what pride does. Pride will cause you to be filled with insecurity. Uh, it'll cause you to be filled with fear. 
you'll be thinking, well, what are the other people going to think about me? What is, so, what is sister so-and-so going to think? What's brother so-and-so going to think? Everybody's watching me. Everybody's looking at me. Everybody's going to judge me. Uh, they're going to they're gonna judge me. Uh, well, well, I don't know if I'll praise God, you know. I, I just don't know if I'll praise God because they might laugh at me. They, they, I don't know that I'll praise God because they, they may make fun of me. I may look weird. I, I may feel weird. All of that is rooted in pride. I said all that is rooted in pride. Testing, one, two, three. Can y'all? I said all that is rooted in pride. What other people think about me. It doesn't matter what other people think. What does God think? God created us to praise him. God said, I put you on this earth for one purpose, and that's to praise and to glorify and to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. And, and somebody says, well, you know, I, I, I'll praise God, but I, I'll, I'll do it my way. I, I'll clap. You know, I, maybe I'll sing, but I'll sing quietly to myself, but I won't sing too loud. Uh, but that lifting hand stuff, no, 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 no. Pete, that's too demonstrative. Oh, I'll go to a ball game and act like a fool, but I won't come to church and, and lift a hand to praise God. Come on, somebody. No, people might think I'm a little weird. I, I, I can't have that. I can't do that. That, that bowing, that kneeling before the Lord, I, I, I just never, ever, ever would do that. And pride will keep us from worshiping the one that is worthy of all praise and glory and honor. And I want to encourage you, church. I want to encourage you. Listen, lay down your pride. Lay down your pride. Lay it aside and praise the Lord. You were created to praise the Lord. Pride. Pride, pride, pride. I want you to see a third praise dealer. I mentioned it already, but that's people. People will steal your praise if you let them. Second Samuel 6, verse number 20 says, When David returned home to bless his household, Michal daughter of Saul came out to meet him and said, how the king of Israel has distinguished himself today, going around half naked in full view of the slave girls of his servants as any vulgar fellow would. Calvary, can I tell you, she, she's being kind of nasty right there. She's being kind of ugly, being kind of mean. David's wife was attacking him. She was mocking him. Sometimes the people that are closest to us are the ones that will attack us. The people that are closest to us are the ones that will mock us. Because David was praising God. And I can only imagine what the other people were saying to David, the king of Israel, as he's praising the Lord. I can hear him over there whispering, what's he doing? I can't believe that. I, I've never seen a king do that. I, I can just see some of his cabinet saying, hey, hey, king, stop it. You're embarrassing us. You're making us look bad. Come on, king. Calm down. You're too excited. Come on. You're making us... Look bad. Stop all that. You're not being kingly. You're not being distinguished. But David did not allow people to steal his praise. Matter of fact, I want you to listen to what David said to his wife. I think this is so powerful. 2 Samuel 6 and verse 22. He says, I will become even more undignified than this. And I will be humiliated in my own eyes. But by the slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in high honor. David said, no one, no one, nobody, no thing is going to steal my praise from God. Because God is worthy of my praise. Calvary, don't allow a person to steal you of your praise. 
They may question your praise. They may laugh at your praise. They may mock your praise. They may get angry because of your praise. But don't let people steal your praise. You were created to praise the Lord. I want you to see a fourth praise stealer. This is so important, so key. That is perspective. Perspective. Perspective can be a praise stealer. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse number 21, it says, David said to Michal, It was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father or anyone from his house when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people. I will celebrate before the Lord. Michal, David's wife, she had the wrong perspective. I said she had the wrong perspective. She thought David was just trying to show off. When he was dancing in the streets, David said, no, 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 you got it all wrong. You're getting it all twisted up in your mind. Now, let me give you the right perspective. He, David said, I did this before the Lord. I didn't do it for show. I didn't do it so anybody would notice me. I didn't try to bring attention to myself. I did it before the Lord. I did this to praise the Lord. I did this to honor the Lord. You see, wrong perspective can steal your praise. Let me just share some wrong perspectives that will steal your praise. See, people have the wrong perspective. Sit in our churches every week, and they have the wrong perspective. I'm not talking about people out there. I'm talking about people in here. Wrong perspective. Here's one wrong perspective, that praise and worship is a church thing. Come on, y'all. It's just something you do at church. That's a wrong perspective. You do it everywhere. You do it in your home. Those watching online today, you don't have to be here in the sanctuary to praise God. You can praise God right there in your home, right there in your kitchen, right there in your, in your living room, right there uh, in your car, wherever you are. You can worship the Lord. You can praise the Lord. Uh, I hope today in this sanctuary, the, the, and those watching by live stream, I hope that during this service you lifted your hand. I hope that during this service you, you, you praised the Lord. Uh, you sang the songs. You, you're lifting up the name of Jesus. You're giving a hallelujah. You're giving a, a thank you, Jesus. Because it's not just church. It's not just a church thing. It's who we are. We are created to praise Him. And it doesn't matter where we are. We ought to praise the Lord. And it doesn't matter what day of the week it is. And it doesn't matter whether it's raining or the sun is shining. And it doesn't matter whether it's a good day or a bad day. Or whether the bank account has plenty or the bank account has nothing. We ought to praise God in the good times, in the bad times, and all the in-between. We're created to praise God. Here's another wrong perspective. People think this. It's for super spiritual people. Or it's for pastors. No, 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 no. It's for every created being. Every created being. Every, listen, we're created to praise the Lord. Every Christian should be giving praise to God. If you call yourself a Christian, you should be giving praise to God. Another wrong perspective is this, if I like the music, well, I'll praise God if it's my song, if I like the music, if it's a hymn, or if it's a gospel song, or if it's a contemporary Christian song, or if it's a fast song, I only like the fast songs, or, or if it's a, you know, a slow song, that, that's when I praise the Lord is, when it's a slow song. And, 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 and no, that's the wrong perspective. It's not if I like the music. I praise Him no matter what the, the style. There's been so many churches divided over the style of music. So many churches split. Do you think God cares what kind of music we sing or play? No, He just wants us to worship Him. If the song brings glory to Him, it doesn't matter if it's got a contemporary beat or if it's, you know, what they call high church music. It don't matter to God. He just wants to be praised. Let me tell you, he's in, he's in heaven where the angel choirs. And I, I'm sure there's so much variety 
Because the Bible says there are going to be people from every nation, every tribe, every tongue. every ca- There's going to be people from all over the world. There's going to be people with a, Car- a Caribbean beat. There's going to be people with an African uh, type of music. There's going to be people from, you know, different places around the world. There may, may even be some bluegrass up there, I, I believe. But listen, it don't matter. There's going to be some jazz. All the saints from New Orleans are going to be up there praising God with the jazz. Yeah, you know, there, there, there's going to be the, oh God, the rappers. The rappers. You say, is that even music? Well, apparently. But if you're glorifying God with that, he's pleased. Amen? Now, some of you just looked at me a little cross-eyed. I'm not saying I like it, but I'm saying if they're worshiping God with it, more power to them. Amen? To their own perspective. I only praise God when it's my music, when it's my style, when it's my kind, whether it's fast, whether it's slow. If there's a certain person leading it. Here's another wrong perspective. Some people think this. The wrong perspective is they think praise is for them. I, 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 I praise God when I feel like it. Uh, if I come in and I don't feel like it, then I'm not going to praise God. I had a bad day. Me and my wife had an argument in the car on the way to church. Uh, the kids couldn't find their shoes. Uh, you know, I had to stop and put gas in the car before I made it to church. Uh, it's been a rough morning. But let me tell you, once you walk into this sanctuary, you ought to forget yourself and focus on the one who is worthy. Because let me tell you, there's nothing in this world that changes him. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not. Well, Pastor, I've been sick. Pastor, I, I lost a loved one. Pastor, I, I, I had, I, you know, I, I, I lost uh, my job. Pastor, this, 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 all these things. Listen, it doesn't affect the fact that God is God. And praise is not for us. I said praise is not for us. Praise is for him. Uh, God says, I'll make the rocks Cry out if you don't praise me. Because praise is not for you. Praise is for God. And he's worthy of all praise. We don't praise for us. We praise for him because he's worthy. Psalmist said this in Psalm 34 and verse number 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Don't let the wrong perspective steal your praise. Let me, let me give you a fifth praise stiller. A fifth praise stiller, and that's pain. Pain. I want to show you what happens right before David praises the Lord. Notice this in 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 6. When they, when they defeated the Philistines, and they recaptured the ark, and they were putting the ark on the back of the, the wagon that the oxen were going to pull the ark. It says, when they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah reached out and took hold of the ark of God because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah because of this, his irreverent act. Therefore, God struck him down and he died there beside the ark of God. Then David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzzah. And to this day, that place is called Perez Uzzah. Now, now you, gotta, you have to understand this. Uzzah was David's nephew. It was one of his brother's sons. Uzzah was David's nephew. And Uzzah, because Uzzah touched the Ark of the Covenant, which was forbidden, he died right there on the spot. I mean, and David watched his nephew die a tragic death right before his own eyes. And no doubt David is filled with pain. He's angry. The Bible says he's he's emotional as he watches his nephew die. And yet David did not allow pain to steal his praise. Calvary Assembly of God, those watching by live stream, hear me today. David pressed past the pain and he stepped into praise. We, we've all experienced pain of one sort or the other. We've all experienced 
tragedies. We've all experienced setbacks. We've all had loved ones that have passed and gone to be with the Lord. They've died. The pain of his nephew dying did not stop the king from jumping and leaping and praising God with all his heart and with all his might. And right now, we're in a season in our nation, in our world, where there is pain. And there are problems everywhere. My goodness, you look around. Not only do we have COVID, we've got all the political unrest. We've got all the rioting and the, and the, and the destruction that's going on in our, in our cities. COVID-19 is touching so many. Even in our own church, we've had those that have been affected by it. There are others that are walking around in fear. They're walking around in absolute fear. That creates a pain of itself. Some of you, you've been home. You've been isolated. Some of you facing depression and anxiety. Listen, God made us to be social. He made us to, to have relationships with others and to be able to have friends and to have those that we, you know, interact with. And the fact that we've been isolated has caused depression, has caused anxiety. Some of you, it's your children, your home, their home. And you wish they could go back to school. (laughs) And the schedules could get back to the way they used to be. And there's some pain. There's family pain, tension between you and your spouse. Before the virus outbreak, You weren't getting along very good, and now you're having to be home together a whole lot more. There's relationship pain. There's business, businesses that have closed. Some of you may have lost your job. Some of you losing income. It's real pain. And Calvary, what I want you to understand is you cannot allow pain to steal your praise. You can't allow pain to steal your praise. Hear me today. You've got to be willing to step over the pain and into the praise. To step over the, pra- the pain and into the praise. I want you to hear this last verse, Psalm 69, verse 29. Here's what David says. He says, but as for me, afflicted and in pain, may your salvation, God, protect me. I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. David says, in the middle of my pain, I'm not going to let pain steal my praise. Somebody right now, something's got in between you and your praise. It's got in between you and your praise. You got to step over that thing. You got to step over the pain. You got to step over the the grief. You got to step over the pride. you got to step over the perspective. you got to step over people that are hindering you from praising God. you gotta, you got to not let anything steal your praise. It might be a job loss you're facing. It's an obstacle, but you got to step over the job loss and the pain, and you got to step into praise. Maybe relational pain you're dealing with. You were, you know, you and your spouse, you, you may have divorced. You may have broken up with a, a, a a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Listen, you got to get beyond that. You got to step over the pain and into the praise and say, God, you're still worthy. God, I still give you glory. God, I still lift up your name. God, I'm concerned about the future that's causing me some pain. I, I've been dealing with some depression, and, uh, some anxiety. It's causing me pain. Step over the depression. Step over the anxiety. Step over the worry. Step over the hindering things and Give God some praise. Give Him praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. And I can tell you this. I can tell you this. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He, he, he's a promise keeper. And the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. Come on, Christine. Worship team, minister to us this morning. Let's just worship as they begin to play and sing. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him praise. Give him praise. He'll make a way. Cause I'm gonna see the victory. And 
Come on, you can stand. Lift your hands. Sing it to him today. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. He'll make a way if you'll praise him. this morning, church. Come on, praise him at home. Praise him in the living room. Praise him in the kitchen. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. We were created to praise. You take what the enemy meant for evil and, and you turn, turn it for good. good. You turn it for good. He'll do it. He'll do it. You take, take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Yes. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for turn it for good you turn it for good you take you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good oh, I'm gonna see a victory and I'm gonna see a victory for the battle Listen, if we'll learn to praise him, we're going to see a victory. If we'll learn to not let these praise stealers, these praise robbers stop us, we will see the victory. Father, I thank you, God, that you created us to praise you. I thank you, Lord, that you've given us the ability to know how to praise. Lord, I pray that nothing, 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 not pain, not perspective, not people, not pride, not position. Nothing will stop us from praising you, God. We'll praise you. Your praise will continually be in our mouth. Oh, God, make us a people of praise, a people of praise with heads bowed. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, you say, Pastor, I, I, I don't know this Jesus you're speaking of. Listen, I'm not asking you to accept him. I'm asking you to follow him. I'm not asking you just to, 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 to invite him in. I'm asking you to say, God, I'm going all the way with you. If that's you today and you'd say, pray for me, Pastor. I'm not where I need to be. Pray for me. I need Jesus as my Lord. If you'll lift a hand, we'll, we'll, we'll acknowledge that and we'll believe that. God's going to show you how to follow Him. Father, I thank you today. I thank you this morning, God, that Jesus gave His life on Calvary. He shed innocent blood for our sins. And now we repent. We repent of all of our sins. We turn from our sin and we turn to you, God. We acknowledge that without you, we are lost and we are undone. We're on our way to a devil's hell. But Lord, through you, we have forgiveness. We have cleansing. We have peace. We have relationship with the Father. Lord, we don't just accept you, but we follow you. We follow you to the end. 
Go with us now and help us to praise you. Help us to be the people you created us to be. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Have a good day.